Today, DJI have released the new firmware for the FPV drone as well as the FPV goggles version 2 that not only brings a couple of little firmware improvements to the drone itself, but this firmware also fixes the issue that I highlighted on the version 2 goggles that meant if the battery goes flat, it would jump from standalone FPV mode that worked with the FPV air units like this on the Cadex Vista into the FPV drone mode and prevented you from switching back. Now in this video we're going to talk a bit about what's changed, what's actually been done on the FPV drone mode, don't get too exciting, there really isn't a lot here, and just confirm some things on the FPV goggles version 2 as well. Now just to be clear up front, this firmware is only for the version 2 goggles, the FPV drone and the FPV remote. There is no changes to the standalone FPV goggles version 1, there is no changes to the ear unit firmware and there is no changes to the FPV standalone element of the firmware in the FPV goggles version 2. All of the changes are on the FPV drone side of things and that's where the issue was blocking people switching back. As a result of there being no changes, Every hack and every mod still works. The FCC hacks, the 1200 milliwatt, the DigiView app, all of that still works on the Vision 2 goggles. Nothing has changed. Don't worry. So if you do upgrade, all of that stuff is still there. Now, as I said, this firmware update fixes that issue on the version 2s as I highlighted in my previous videos but the main reason for this firmware alongside that fix is for the FPV drone and what we're going to do is jump into it and just take a quick look at what has actually changed. Now hopping over to the desktop you can see that the new firmware is version 01.02 0.0000 and it's that firmware for the goggles version 2 the fpv drone and the remote controller now this firmware update is a very very mild one and it's not really worth running out and updating to unless you absolutely have to for instance the changes are they've added the ability to enable or disable video subtitles in the camera settings on the goggles. This means you now have the option to have that subtitle data option on the FPV drone, just like you did on the standalone FPV. So when you're using your own software, it gives you that additional telemetry data that you can now have with the FPV drone side of things as well. There isn't a lot in there, but it is now available. They've added the ability to trigger the Find My Drone by pressing the mode and the brake button simultaneously on the motion controller. They've added a flashing auxiliary bottom light when you enable the Find My Drone feature. Now, if you've not used Find My Drone, it's a feature that causes the motors to beep. And they've now added the ability for the LED on the bottom to flash as well. And it's actually quite good. I was quite impressed when I tested it. Although there is a few quirks around that behavior, and I'll talk about that in a minute too. They've also improved things by adding the ability to start and stop the motors in manual mode by customizing the C2 switch. Now, the C2 switch on the FPV goggles, uh, sorry, the FPV remote version 2 is the switch that you would use for your camera adjustment in normal mode. So they've now added the ability to set, you can start and start the motors via that switch. For me... It's not that important and I would have still preferred to have had the option to adjust the camera in manual mode rather than have the switch to start and stop the motors. But I do know this was an issue for some people and that one should please a few. Jumping over, they have now added the ability to use the FPV drone with the smart controller via HDMI. Now, this isn't allowing the smart controller to actually control the drone. This is allowing the smart controller to display the video output like on the standard H uh, FPV system version 1. So you can actually connect the goggles version 2 to the smart controller and then have that image out via HDMI. You still, though, cannot control the actual drone via the smart controller. They've also optimized the hints on the goggles for updates, manual mode limitations, motion controller critical low battery warnings. They say they've optimized flight safety, optimized flight experience in manual mode, and optimized flight experience when using the motion controller. Now, as I said in my other videos on this, DJI actually gave me an early look at this firmware a couple of weeks ago, and I've had a bit of time to play with it. As I've already said at the start, I have confirmed in my tests that it resolves the issue on the version 2 goggles that prevented you switching back, and I've got to try it on the FPV drone mode as well. Now, 
of all of the things on here, the main one that I've had a play with is the Find My Drone feature, and I've checked how that behaves. And if you haven't got that enabled, I strongly suggest you go into your settings and set a double tap of C1 to enable the Find My Drone mode, because it enables you to double tap that, and the motors will start beeping, and then you'll also now have the LED flashing on the bottom. Now, this isn't on by default, and in my opinion, it probably should be. And you really do want to make sure you've got this option turned on because it is very very handy indeed it's a shame actually there aren't a few more buttons on this remote to allow you to do a couple more things like that but it is a feature that i strongly advise people have if you're going to be doing a bit more aggressive flying with the fpv drone although chances are you might rip an arm off it if you do as for some of the other stuff that dj have said around improving the flight experience now uh, i've tried the manual mode switch for the start and stop motors and that's quite nice um i can't really say i felt any difference in the way the drone flies myself personally it still flies the way it did before DJI say they've improved it we'll have to take the word for it on that one but overall it really is a small update from the FPV drone side of things there is no additional recording modes there are no feature additions other than those little tweaks it really is a very small change overall now this firmware is out and available today and it's available for you to update if you need it. Personally, if you're an FPV drone user, I wouldn't rush to update this firmware unless you want that Find My Drone flashing LED. It's quite good. Or you are a smart controller owner. Again, there is no reason not to update at this point. I haven't found any main reasons not to, but there certainly isn't anything in you you're going to run out and get. If you are, though, an FPV Goggles Version 2 user with the standalone FPV, I strongly advise you update to this firmware. It prevents the goggles entering that reset cycle and actually switch into the wrong mode but even though it should allow you to switch back as well now if you are someone on a set of v2s that is locked out updating to this firmware should give you the option back and allow you to switch back into fpv ear unit mode so if you are stuck do the update via assistant for fpv and you should be able to switch back. One just other comment on this firmware about the Find My Drone feature is that if you have it on, in my tests, I found that you needed the goggles connected to the drone as well for it to work. If the goggles were turned off, double tapping, even when the feature was assigned, wouldn't enable it on the drone. And it is a bit of a downside, and that is one thing I fed back to DJI, because you could have a situation where you have a crash because your goggles battery goes flat, and you have the Find My Drone feature on, but double tapping the button won't work because the goggles aren't powered on. So it is a little thing that I tested. I don't know if they've actually changed that. It's something I haven't had a chance to actually test yet. Um, I've updated the goggles to the latest firmware and I've checked all the hacks, but I haven't done the drone and the remote yet. Anyway, um, that's it. The firmware is out. Please check it out. This now pretty much wraps up the issues we had with the version 2 with this FPV mode switch problem. As a direct result of that, I said I'd take down that original video and that's something I'm going to go and do later. I'm really interested in your feedback on this firmware. Please do let me know what you think about this. Check if you're locked out, update this firmware, tell me what you think. As I said, it is only for the V2s. Nothing has changed on the standalone FPV. There are no changes, there are no improvements, all the hacks still works. But if you have been locked out, please do let me know and let me know what you think about it for the FPV drone as well. That's it for this one. If you've enjoyed the video, please do consider hitting the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the little bell as well. If you'd like to support the channel, there are links to buy me a coffee as well as Patreon in the description too. And it's only by you guys supporting us are we able to keep making videos like this. Anyway, that's it for this one. And I'll, uh, I'll update you guys in the near future if anything new comes to light.